Beating rocks, beating rocks. Do 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 do. Beating rocks. Hi guys, it's Rebecca from the Garden of the Gods Visitor Nature Center. Now, I have a favorite animal that comes through the park, and you guys probably see them at home too. They're called butterflies, and they come in all different shapes and sizes, and they travel all over the world. Well, today we're gonna take a look at a butterfly with some of our favorite friends from the Magic School Bus. Let's take a look inside. Being in Miss Frizzle's class is always surprising. She has a way of turning everything into an exciting adventure, even picking a name for our class soccer team. We had exactly six hours before the biggest soccer game of the year, and we still didn't have a name or a mascot for our team. We need a mascot that's different, said Keisha. It has to be so surprising that the other team won't know what hit them, added Carlos. Phoebe glanced at the book in her hand. It was all about butterflies and moths. I got it, she shouted with delight. We were all excited. What, what, we asked her. Phoebe spread her arms out like wings. The Walker Elementary Butterflies. Suddenly, we weren't so excited. You want our name of the soccer team to be the Butterflies? Ralphie asked. He sounded disgusted. And have a mascot that's small, asked Wanda. And swaddable, continued Kim. And beautiful, Keisha finished in disbelief. We want to be a tough, talented team, not a pretty team. Just then, Arnold's know-it-all cousin, Janet, climbed down from the bleachers to join us. Janet put her hands on her hips. You want a mascot that's totally different? Asked Janet. Then get this, how about the Walker Elementary Bog Beasts? It's so surprising that they won't know what hit them, said Keisha. Wow, everyone thought it was a great idea. Everyone except Arnold, that is. What's a bog beast? He asked. Suddenly, we were surprised by Miss Frizzle. Flapping wings, she glided down from the ceiling and she was dressed in a butterfly costume. A crafty question, Arnold, she asked. Anyone know what a bog beast looks like? Janet? Janet's face turned beet red. Well, uh, it's probably a... Uh... Dorothy Ann pulled out her notebook. According to my research, a bog is wet, soggy ground, like a swamp. That was when Miss Frizzle got that, got that time for a field trip look in her eyes. Seems to me then, she said, a swamp's the place to find a bog beast. To the swamp. We all climbed aboard the magic school bus and fastened our seatbelts. We weren't surprised when the bus turned off the main highway and onto a small dirt road. We weren't surprised when it drove into a misty forest either. We even weren't surprised when the bus went right into a swamp, gurgled, gargled, and then turned into a swamp boat. When you're in Miss Frizzle's class, you just get used to things like that. The bus skimmed across the top of the swamp water. All around us, we saw trees and flowers. What is this place, Miss Frizzle? asked Dorothy Ann. It's called Butterfly Bog, replied Miss Frizzle. Just then a swarm of beautiful yellow butterflies took off from a branch. A blue jay flew down and snatched one of the butterflies in its beak. Some mascot, said Janet. If a blue jay can do that, what would the bulldogs do to your soccer team? The bulldogs were the team we were supposed to play. The bus stopped at a small moss-covered island. Here we are, announced Miss Frizzle. Bog Beast Landing. This was getting really exciting. Soon, we would probably see a real-life bog beast. Carlos covered the bus with moss so it would blend in with the surroundings. Hmm. That way, the bog beast wouldn't be afraid to come close up. We stayed very still and waiting. Now, according to my research, the best way to catch something is to use some kind of bait, whispered Dorothy Ann. And Janet knew exactly what kind of bait was best. She smiled and picked up her butterfly net. Like the biggest, juiciest butterfly in the bog, she said. She jumped off the bus and onto the island. Janet's idea to catch a butterfly really upset Phoebe. Janet, why don't you pick on someone your own size? She shouted after her. Miss Frizzle thought that was a great idea. 
She reached under the dashboard and pulled out her porter shrink machine. She aimed the machine at Janet and Liz and pushed the button. She was going to shrink them. A light flashed and a loud bell rang. Unfortunately, the porter shrink rays bounced right off the shiny metal charm that Liz wore around her neck. The rays came right back towards the bus. The next thing we knew, not Janet and Liz were two inches high. Worst of all, the porter shrink had landed in the water. It was too wet to work. That's when we heard Miss Frizzle say something we thought we would never hear. Whoops, that wasn't supposed to happen. I don't care how small I am, declared Phoebe. I've got butterflies to save. She raced off to make sure that the butterflies stayed away from Janet and Liz. Then we heard a scream. We ran to Phoebe's rescue. She was staring eye to eye with a long snake-like monster. The monster seemed to be licking its chops. It looked hungry. Even Ralphie was scared. Okay, we've seen a bog beast, he said. Now let's get out of here. Ralphie tried to run off, but Miss Frizzle pulled him back. Not so fast, Ralphie, she said calmly. Since you've never seen a bog beast, how can you be sure that this is a bog beast? It looks more like a snake to me, said Wanda. Except it doesn't move like a snake, Phoebe pointed out. It moves like a caterpillar. Hey, it is a caterpillar, agreed Tim. A caterpillar pretending to be a snake, Carlos added. Just then, a large green praying mantis landed in front of the caterpillar. It stood on its hind legs, blocking the caterpillar's path. The praying mantis was looking for lunch. Won't a praying mantis eat a caterpillar? Dorothy Ann asked him. The caterpillar reared up, wagged its head, and flicked something that looked like a tongue. The praying mantis hopped away quickly. Not if the praying mantis thinks the caterpillar is a snake, answered Tim. I get it. Carlo shouted, that caterpillar tricked its enemy by pretending to be something it isn't. Then Wanda remembered we were still looking for the name of our soccer team. What if we call our team the Walker Elementary Caterpillars? We'll get laughed out of the game, answered Ralphie. Besides, if we don't get back soon, there won't be any game. But that wasn't our only problem. We still had to stop Janet from catching the butterflies. There was no way we were going to get her, to let her feed them to the bog beast. It's just not fair, Miss Frizzle, sobbed Phoebe, as we watched Janet swing her net back and forth. I know, Miss Frizzle smiled. Janet doesn't stand a chance. What did the frizz mean by that? Janet lifted her net and grinned. This one's a real juicy one, she told Liz. But just as Janet tried to capture the butterfly, it seemed to disappear. Okay, wise guy, where are you? Janet called out. The butterfly's colored markings blended in with the log. Janet couldn't find it. I always say, if they can't see you, they can't eat you, Miss Frizzle laughed. Then she put two fingers in her mouth and whistled loudly. The bus pulled up and we all piled in. You're mine, wimp, Janet called to the butterfly. She lifted her net in the air and Liz fell out of Janet's shoulder. Splash! Liz landed in the mud, and in all confusion, the butterfly flew away. A big wave of brown mud washed over us. Swamp swill! yelled Carlos. Arnold had just enough. That's it, he said. I'm unshrinking us before Jumbo Janet crushes us all. Arnold took Miss Frizzle's porter shrinker and pushed the button. Nothing happened. Then we heard a bell ring. What's that? Arnold asked. He sounded a little nervous. The doodanger, exclaimed Miss Frizzle. It dings when the porter shrinker is too wet to work. Miss Frizzle handed a blow dryer to Arnold. Start drying, she said. Just then we heard a loud scream. That's Janet, Arnold told us. I know that scream anywhere. We tried to run and help her, but we were stopped in our tracks by a huge flash of black and yellow stripes. We were so surprised we completely forgot about Janet. Bob Beast, yelled Ralphie. Dorothy Ann looked at the black and white stripes, then she said, Then she looked at the butterfly in Mothbook. It's not a bug bee, she said. It's a zebra butterfly. Ralphie blushed. Well, it just uh, startled me with its colors, that's all. See, even though butterflies are small and pretty, they're not wimps, Phoebe told Ralphie. They trick you. They hide from you. They even scare you. That's how they stay alive.
Now everyone wanted our team to be the Walker Elementary Butterflies, except Ralphie. Never, he cried. I'll play for the other team before I play f for anyone called a butterfly. And with that, he walked away. Before long, we heard Ralphie yell. We found him hiding behind the root of a mangrove tree. It's a, uh, it's a. Uh. Wanda laughed at Ralphie. Yeah, we know, it's a bog beast. Wanda looked up, two huge black eyes stared back down at her. All of a sudden, Wanda wasn't laughing anymore. Nobody was. Bog beast, we all cried out at once. But it wasn't a bog beast after all. It was a buckeye butterfly. Those eyes aren't real, Phoebe pointed out. They just look like eyes to fool the enemy. Butterflies were pretty tricky and surprising. Just the things we wanted our soccer team to be. Okay, Phoebe, you win. We'll be the Walker Elementary Butterflies, Ralphie said. Phoebe led us all in a cheer. Let's take our team to the skies, she shouted. Let's be the Walker Elementary Butterflies, we cheered back. A big smile flashed across Miss Frizzle's face. If you insist, she said. We heard a loud whirring sound, and the next thing we knew, we were flying around in the magic school bus. The magic school busterfly spread its wings and took off and made a low humming sound as it flew. So what do you think, class? Miss Frizzle asked as we came in for a landing. It's certainly a new sensation, answered Dorothy Ann. Just then, a giant face appeared in front of us, and it did not seem friendly. Janet thought we were a butterfly, a big juicy butterfly. She wanted to catch us. Janet's gonna feed us to the bog beast, screamed Ralphie. The butterfly flew away from Janet, but Janet was a lot bigger than we were. She's gaining on us, cried Keisha. Miss Frizzle, what should we do? Phoebe had an idea. Is there a button that'll make us blend into our surroundings like real butterflies do? She asked, pointing to the dashboard. Miss Frizzle nodded, nodded. You might check the camouflage box if you can find it. Phoebe reached under the dashboard and opened the camouflage box. There were a lot of buttons. Phoebe couldn't be sure which one would make us blend in with the scenery. Oh no, which one is it? She asked. Suddenly Janet's net came down on top of us. Come on Phoebe, you're our last hope, cried Ralphie. Phoebe wasn't about to give up. Think Butterfly, she mumbled to herself. That's it, I'll surprise her with colors. She flipped the color switch in the camouflage box. The bus turned red, yellow, orange, and blue. And now to trick her with eye spots, Phoebe explained. With a flick of the switch, the bus grew huge bulging eye spots. Janet reached under the net and grabbed for us, but the bus opened its wings really wide. Janet took one look at the bus bright colors and bulging eye spots and screamed. She thought the bus was the bog beast. Janet jumped back, lifting the net with her. We were free! What a field trip, said Arnold, as he bounced down into the sea. He landed right on top of the porta shrinker. Presto! The magic school bus changed right back into its real size. Janet spotted the bus and ran to us. I saw the bog beast, she said. Did it look anything like this butterfly? Tim asked. He showed her a picture of what he had drawn of our bus as a butterfly. Boy, was Janet shocked to find out that we were the bog beast. Miss Frizzle explained that a bog beast can be whatever you want it to be. In this case, it happened to be a bog beast butterfly. The bulldogs couldn't believe it when they saw our mascot. But they were even more surprised when the bog beast butterflies won the soccer game. Phoebe had been right all along. Butterflies weren't just small and beautiful. They were full of surprises. I hope you guys enjoyed this field trip with me. And don't forget, there's a really fun butterfly camouflage exercise that goes with this. So click the link, take a look, and let me see your creations. I'll see you next week. Have a great day.